E Production time. I'm Reed Stefan, Reels Puppet in the game. Today, I'm going to show you how to record, tune, mix, and even master your vocal tracks for free using BandLab. Now, if you're not familiar with BandLab, this is very much like a DAW, but it works in your web browser, your phone, or your tablet. For today's example, I'm going to be connecting my mic to my Apollo interface into my computer and using BandLab's free DAW and plugins to record some vocals, process them, and export my finished product. You'll begin from your user dashboard where you can hit the create button to start a new project. And today I'm gonna to be recording audio over an instrumental that I produced. And you can drag in audio from your finder or you can browse their enormous catalog of loops and samples and produce your own beat. It's a fully featured DAW with audio tracks, MIDI tracks, connects to your keyboard, connects to your interface. It even automatically detected the tempo of my instrumental. So let's start out by giving this a listen and pulling it down and making a little headroom to record our voice. <laughs> Four or five dB should be good. And now we're going to add an audio track, voice slash mic. And we can go down to source, and this is where we get to change the settings for our channel. Like I said, it connects to any interface or audio device sound driver you have connected to your computer. I'm going to choose my Apollo. Channel one is where my microphone is connected. And here's where you have the option to monitor your voice through your headphones or not. Just by clicking this button, or by turning it off. And that's something that's up to you and personal preference. But if you're one of the singers like Kara, who likes to have a little bit of sauce in their headphone mix while they're performing on the mic, that's absolutely no problem here with BandLab. To take it a step further, you can even enable pitch correction in your headphones using the free auto pitch feature here inside of BandLab. This will tune your vocals in your headphones while you're singing as well as when you're playing back your recordings. And you can turn it on the heaviest setting, the lightest setting, or anywhere in between. You also have the ability to add a little bit of reverb to your headphone mix while you sing. Also, it helps while you're recording to have a metronome on there. And BandLab gives you this great menu of different metronome sounds, as well as volume control and count in length. So I'm just gonna turn my click down a little bit to avoid it being too loud and interfering with my recordings. So let's turn up the reverb. And Kara, can you hear yourself? Check one, two. Yes, I can. Perfect. All right, let's take this from the very beginning. Select our recording channel and hit record. Mm -hmm. You know just what I want. I know you got the body. The key to turn me on. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Perfect. Let's give this a listen with our auto pitch. And we can shorten this clip just by grabbing this little handle here and cutting it right before the vocal starts. You know just what I want. I know you got the body. The key to turn me on. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Already synchronized. Don't gotta say it, baby. Before I do I die. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. So I'm just going to bring it back. There's one note that we messed up. I'm just going to go to... The slice button. Let's just make a little space here to record into. I just have to make a new audio track. I'll use a duplicate of this one. And we could just delete these pieces and record by selecting onto this track and pressing record. Combine these two together, drag it straight up. So we've got our first little bit of a lead vocal here. And the only processing we have on it so far is the free auto pitch plugin. I might actually add a little bit more. I think for this style of music, the heavy tuning sounds cool, but everybody's song is different. So this is really going to be your personal taste. But over here, we have even more effects that we can add, like compression, EQ. I'm going to start with a little bit of EQ. Let's do the EQ3, very simple three band EQ. Let's just play it and mess with this. Sounds really nice. 
nice down in the low. And let's do a little bit of compression too. These are just two basic processes I always like to have on my vocals, just to have a more finished sounding mix to listen to your recordings back through. You know just what I want. I know you got just turn the ratio down. I like a slower attack and a faster release. Synchronize, don't gotta say it, baby. Let's for it do or die. I'm on my way, I'm on my way. And of course we have our reverb here going through our reverb send. That's a perfect little chain for now. So let's just continue recording. We're gonna get more into the plugins later, but I just love how they have this fully featured mixer here for you to listen through your headphones and listen back to your recordings. Let's go into the pre-chorus of our song. That's a finished verse right there. You ready? Yes. Okay. Do that, I'm on my way, I'm on my way. Getting lost in you, there's a jungle in We're going to be doubling and stacking and doing more things later, but it's always great to just have a finished lead down as a guide for the rest of your vocals. Need a little push tonight. Tell me if you're pulling up all right. Yeah. And I always like to cut off the unnecessary breaths by just using this tool to crop in the edge of the audio file just to keep everything sounding nice and clean. And you can even hold command to have more of a fine adjustment so it doesn't snap to the grid. This is a call and response chorus, so let's go back and fill in these little gaps. Actually going to have these on two separate lead channels because we're going to put different plugins on them later when we mix. We might also put some different pitch correction settings on them too. I might pitch these harder than the other ones. Kara just recorded all of her lead vocals for the verse, pre, and chorus of our song. And next we're gonna do something a little simpler and just double some of the most important phrases. Just like how we duplicated our lead vocal, I'm gonna make another channel to record onto by hitting duplicate track. Can remove the content. And I'm gonna give this a unique name by double clicking here. And this is gonna be our double, and I'm gonna put the letter L here because this is getting panned to the left using the little mixer right here. We're gonna duplicate it and you guessed it, double for the right ear and switch this panning over. This is gonna give a really great stereo width to your chorus or whatever important lyrics in your vocal that you want to emphasize. So let's just go back and record two more of our favorite lines. Need a little push tonight. Tell me if you're pulling up all right. Yeah, I, I push it, push it. When you have audio hard panned, it can sound very loud when it's all being forced through one ear, so I always like to turn it down about minus 10 for my double vocals. Just a little mixing tip that you can implement while you're recording. Now let's add doubles to these responses. So I'm just gonna duplicate these channels, record our response vocals as doubles. So starting around here would be good. To help us kind of differentiate our different sections of doubles and layers and things like that, because it can very quickly get disorderly, I'm going to start coloring these tracks slightly different. So our doubles are going to be slightly darker. So let's create some more channels and record some high octaves in here. I'm going to duplicate. We're going to be singing all those high pretty notes. So let's do that in the chorus right here. Push 
So all of our vocals for our chorus are stacked in. We've got our leads for our verse and pre. Finally, I want to add the little icing on the cake, the cherry on top, and that is the vocal ad-libs. So I'm going to create one more channel here at the very bottom, and this is going to be called our ad-libs. And we can put the panning in the center for now. And we're going to take it from the very top, and we're just going to sing whatever spontaneous little things come to mind to add personality or a memorable moment to the vocal. It's always good to record more options than you think you might need. Of course, you could always go and delete the ad libs that felt extra later when you go and listen to it. So all of our vocals are recorded top to bottom, lead, doubles, harmonies, and ad libs. We've put a little bit of tuning and processing on these vocals, but now it's time to go back and really give this a mix. I'm going to use this loop region here to create a loop around section of the verse. And let's just take a listen to the lead vocal and see if we can add anything else to this chain to really make it special. You know just what I want. I know you got the body. You get on here to FX. The key to turn me on. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Already synchronized. Don't gotta say it, baby. Live for it, do or die. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. Let's try turning this reverb off. And let's try doing a delay. Now let's take the wet level and turn it down a little bit. And let's dial in a delay time that feels nice and rhythmic for this song. And we can turn the wet level down. I love how they give you separate wet and dry level. It just keeps it nice and simple, streamlined here. Let's try and go and add a little bit of reverb using one of the special reverbs they have here. A little bit of reverb, a little bit of size. going to use this multi filter to do a low cut on this vocal. I'm going to switch this to high pass and the frequency can be for female vocals. I like to low cut it around 90 to 100. Maybe male vocals could be a little lower and I'll actually drag this into the very beginning of my chain just to cut that noise away before all the other processes. I know you got the body. You can pull the cue down a little bit. I'm on my way. I'm on my way. You can see it kind of does that thin effect too. And actually, that sounded pretty cool when I turned the knob. So I'm just going to click on the timeline and then hit the letter A and it opens automation mode. And now I can go and find the frequency of my multi filter, which happens to be here at the top because it's the first plugin. And I can actually go in and do that little idea as automation. So we just double click on this line to create a pivot point. And I'm going to create three. And only this middle one is going to get brought up. And I want to do a little slope going up. I actually like it the way it sounds more low cut. For that little gap, I'd like to fill that with a delay. So I'm going to do some automation here on the wet level for the D delay. And let's just fill this little gap with a quick delay throw. And this is a great way to emphasize the last word of a line or maybe the main word of your song, whatever it may be. A delay just kind of helps it stand out and linger a little bit longer, be more memorable. And let's actually have this automate like up so that it seems like the echo is getting louder, like it's like swelling up in volume. I'm going to 
really emphasize that last chorus with some more delay. And I'm also gonna turn up the reverb in that chorus too. So I'm just gonna grab the mix and turn that up a little bit just in the chorus. And I'd like to use this chain in a couple of other spots around my vocals. So I'm just gonna hit save as, and this is gonna be called Kara Vocals. And I'm just gonna go down here and I'm gonna open up my presets, Kara Vocals. Push it, ah, ah, pull la la. And since this is the response and a call and response, I'm just gonna leave this one a little bit thinner and just kind of leave it like that instead of automating it. Ah, ah, push it, push it, ah, ah, pull la la. I think that's just gonna sound a little cooler and cut through nice. I might even compress it more too. And now for our doubles, I'm gonna do a similar chain. So I'm just gonna pull up my preset, care of vocals. I'm gonna add a little bit more low cut on there because I don't think the doubles need to be kind of as big as the background vocals, maybe not as bright either. We could keep the delay low and the mix on the reverb low. I'm gonna go through all of these and keep pulling up this preset. Keep those delays rocking here on the doubles too, just because they're doing the same thing as the leads. So we may as well have the automation do the same thing. And finally, I wanna go down here for my ad libs and do something a little bit more special. I'm just gonna base it off of this preset, but I'm gonna do a whole lot more compression because these vocals are kind of just by themselves and need all the help that they can get to cut through. I'm also gonna make them very thin on the way into the chain. And at the end of the chain, I'm gonna do another filter that's cutting out all the high frequencies. So I'm gonna grab a multi-filter and just pull this down. giving them that nice muffled feel in the background. And we can go into modulation, maybe add some effect to them like a chorus, bring it back here before the other effect, just to give those ad libs a little bit more width. Might even boost the mids and highs a little bit. You know just what I want. Pull down the lows. Also going to increase the wet level and feedback. Let's take the chorus off. Let's also bring some of those low frequencies back. That's sounding really great. So finally, we're ready to save our work. So I'm just gonna just save it here to my profile. And I've also left a little bit of headroom just to avoid it clipping so bad that it's distorting. I'm just gonna click publish. I can call this push and pull genre, call it pop song. Unlisted, yes, I don't need to post this publicly yet and revision published. So you could just click here. And now another extremely useful tool that BandLab has for finishing your song is their automatic mastering service. Now this is a free tool where you can upload your unmastered track and download the finished master. So now we're just gonna download our song as a high quality WAV file. And we could do that right here. And here we go. And now we've got a download of the finished track that we produced in the mix editor. So now when your track is ready for mastering, you just go to bandlab.com slash mastering and import your track. So I'm just going to go to my downloads and we'll just download this first one. And it uploads your track, analyzes it, and gives you four different mastering algorithms to hear your song through. Fire's 
got some punchy lows, mid range and clarity. Clarity. There's a jungle in your eyes Animals run wild You can also listen to the Unmaster And the Master Let's try Universal And Tape Tape sounds really nice to me. Universe is a little bit more bumping, less compressed, more dynamic, like it says. Tape's got a nice compression to it. So for my master, I'm gonna choose tape, and when you're finished, you just click download. And what you're left with is the finished master of your track. So that being said, let's take a listen to our final master. You know just what I want. I know you got the body. The key to turn me on. I'm on my way. And just like the rest of the features, this is completely free for you to use at any time. And this could be handy for things like creating a demo mix, a reference mix. If you don't have any mastering plugins or you don't like the mastering plugins that come with the DAW that you use, you can export tracks out of any software and put it into bandlab.com slash mastering to get a different take on it right away. So there you have vocal recording, tuning, mixing, editing, and mastering all for free using bandlab.com. If you want to check out these free tools for yourself, just sign up for a free account and get started creating your music with the various sampling, songwriting, and technical tools that Bandlamp has to offer completely for free. My name is Reed Stefan, realest puppet in the game, and I'll catch you guys next time in another tutorial. Peace out.